Good morning. These are the announcements for the week of following Sunday, November 28th. Did you receive the email containing the 2021 Advent devotional? Our theme this year is Close to Home. Let us know if you would like a printed version. Our next new partners class is Thursday, December 2nd at 630. So if you are new or know someone who might be interested, you are invited to join us. The time has arrived to resettle a refugee family from Afghanistan. We are looking for people who are interested in being on our good neighbor team. The information training night is November 30th at 6.30 p.m. Let us know if you are interested. The pillar serve date is Tuesday, December 14th. Please drop off, drop off your spaghetti supplies at church by Sunday the 12th. Thinking about Christmas gifting, we have script cards available. Check the newsletter for a complete list. If something's not on the list, let us know and we can order it for you. With all this going on in the world today, we could all use some extra prayers. The Prayer Partner Ministry is having their sign up for 2022 right now. Please fill out a form found in the fellowship area at church or give the office a call. Check your inbox on Thursday for our Constant Contact weekly newsletter for more information. If you did not receive us, please let us know or call the office at 920-788-6492. Have a great week. This is Ed Albrandt. We're part of the re-entry task force at Christ the King. Um, Ed said, I think we should do an update and let people know what's going on. He said, and we can do it good cop and bad cop. Guess which cop I am, just saying. <laughs> he gave that role to me. Anyway, COVID numbers are the highest they have been since the vaccine came out. The good news, the pre-vaccine numbers were higher than today's numbers. But we have to be smart with numbers rising. We have to learn to live with COVID because unfortunately it's not going anywhere, any, it's not going away anytime soon. That's true, but getting vaccinated and getting your booster shot is really the best way to help decrease the spread. The reentry task force continues to meet regularly. Your pastors, office staff, task force have been listening to everybody, and we are trying to figure out ways for safe alternatives for our congregation. The task force is meeting again this Tuesday to discuss the rising COVID numbers and to review all our options. And there will be an update probably Thursday in the um, constant, constant contact. So look there for seeing what, you know, how things came out, so. And please keep the task force in your prayers. Please. Thank you, Ed and Laura. And good morning, Christ the King. Happy New Year to you and to all of our friends here that are live streaming this morning. It's good to see you and for others who will catch it a little bit later. Uh, we gather together and I should say Happy New Year to everyone as well. It is the new year in the liturgical calendar of the church. This is the uh, first Sunday of Advent. Our first Sunday in which uh, we begin the new, if you will, year of our liturgy. Uh, Luke is now the gospel that we will be in, Matthew, Mark, Luke. It is year C, so that is the third year. Uh, Luke is a gospel writer that uh, was known to be a doctor. He's the only one uh, who was considered a Gentile, if you will, who writes to the Gentiles. So in our next year, we'll be looking at the gospel of Luke and learning more about what it is um, to share and witness that word to a world that is in need of hearing that good news message of Jesus Christ. So many other things I'd like to say. We did talk about the um, 
devotionals. This is what they look like printed here at church. If you did not pick one up and would like one, otherwise we did email them to you. Uh, We hope that you have that at home and can use that in these next four weeks and the weeks to go beyond that as well. So let us now prepare our hearts and minds. We will do that with the lighting of the Advent wreath. And we have some readings for you, the congregation, to share. And those of you who are live streaming, there is an A and a B. So you're going to be the A's over here, these two sections. And you're going to be the B's over here. And anybody online, pick A or B and just go with it. Um, I will read all of the parts so that we keep that going for those of you online. And um, as you're able, let us stand. For the A's, here we go. We hope for a world where all are fed. We hope for a world with more bridges than walls. We hope for a world with wide open doors. We hope for a world with contiguous laughter. We hope for a world where trees grow tall and creeks run clean. We hope for a world where all people feel at home, in their bodies, in the church, in their physical homes. We hope for that world. We long for that world. We are homesick for that world. So today, we light the candle of hope because hope keeps our hearts alive as we wait. May this light be a reminder that the wait is always worth it. We are close to home. May we carry hope with us. Amen. We will light the candle as we hear People Look East is sung the first verse. Together we share in the prayer of confession, and um, we will share these words together. I think they'll be bold, and we do that, and I will do the unbolded text. Um, So let us share this confession together. Gracious God, we find ourselves with two options every day, to stay homesick for the world you have had in mind, or to allow cynicism to win. Do we hope against hope, or do we throw in the towel? Do we insist on a better world, or do we assume it's impossible? Forgive us for the days when cynicism wins. Forgive us for numbing our homesick hurts instead of using it to fuel a better world and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways, and free us to serve those in need. Amen. The words of forgiveness. Family of faith, even when we throw in the towel, even when we give up God's God's hope, God does not give up on us. We are loved. We are claimed. We are invited closer to God's home. So hear and trust this good news together. There is room for us in God's house, and nothing can separate us from that love. We are claimed. We are forgiven. We are welcomed home. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue together by sharing the words of the prayer of the day. God of the stars and God of our hearts, our days will pass 
but your words will last. The earth might fade, but your words will last. Our memories might blur, but your words will last. The grass will wither, but your words will last. The sky could go dark, and your words would last. So as we listen today, help us to hold on to what will last. Help us hold on to you. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We continue, I believe, with the reading of our scripture today. It's from the book of Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. Jesus was teaching. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the seas and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the chosen one coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place, and to stand before the Chosen One. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Thanks, Thomas, for sharing that gospel today. And as we are gathered on this first Sunday of Advent, there's so much excitement for those of you who have Advent calendars. Anybody opening up your Advent calendars with chocolates in it? So that was always my greatest memory of getting to this time after Thanksgiving to get ready for Christmas because it's so long a wait. Well, it's only four weeks away, so we will be there very soon. And so uh, uh, closer to home, our close to home is our theme. And what does that mean for us? Today as we read this gospel, it's, a, it's an apocalyptic gospel or an apocalyptic discourse, meaning it's of the future that Jesus is teaching about. A discourse is a teaching or some sayings. And Jesus is teaching, he is sharing uh, with those who are gathered of what it's going to be when that time comes, when he comes back to bring people to himself. That day, uh, God's day, or that promised day, that day when we will all be joined together when Jesus comes. Jesus is giving us hope here on this first Sunday of Advent. Jesus is sharing with us the promise, but there's also some words in this gospel that are kind of terrorizing. They're kind of scary. They're kind of words that, that make us maybe a little anxious and a little fearful. Although that was what was going on in the first century. And I'd have to say it's maybe not so different than it is today for some of us. And what we're going through in life at this point in time. This farewell discourse leads us to understanding what is close to home. 
And so as we think about our message today about homesick, we'll get to that in just a moment, but we'll go with what it means to be close to home. There are a lot of different meanings to that. For some of you, when you're in the car and you know you're like an hour or less from home, the, the scenery gets to be pretty familiar, and you're probably thinking in your mind, I wish we were home. How much further? Um, Thanksgiving, we were only in Wapaka coming home, you know, 35, 40 minutes to our home. Are we, I wish we could be home already. We have this homesickness of wanting to be home, but we're not quite yet there. But we will be at some point. So we're on that home stretch, and when we start seeing signs like this, this is a sign that has Highway 10 and 441. That's close. That's, we're close to home then at that point. But we're not quite there. Another way in which we might be homesick might be a, a little bit more of a feeling when someone says something to you and it is close to home. It strikes your heart or your mind about something close to home of an experience that you can deeply remember when someone says something and that is close to home for us. I remember the time when much like you are recounting your time. We relate to one another, and it hits close to home. Another home piece is we know that being at home is important for us. There's safety and security of being at home. In fact, we know that we've had to study school from home. We've had to work from home. It was safer to be at home not too long ago. And we find home to be a great place to be. At least I hope it is for you. I hope home is a place of love, a place of security, a place where you can make mistakes and you can try new things, a place where you can be creative. But not all homes here on earth allow for that. Sometimes there is the rule by a heavy hand or there is fear or there is abuse in the home. I hope for you home is a place of safety and security. Those are all earthly home type ideas and understandings of what it is to be close to home, but there is a heavenly home. We've gone through a difficult week here at Christ the King having a funeral that was uh, at the beginning of the week. These flowers on the altar are beautiful flowers from that, that funeral for Dan Van Dyke. But on Friday we had one of our Congregational members pass away, Hunter Wolt. It was unexpected. And it's difficult to say goodbye to a loved one. My sister-in-law, who's been fighting ALS, also lost her battle to ALS on Friday. And as she was drawing her last breaths, the comment was shared. She's drawing closer to home, her heavenly home, a heavenly home that we all share together through the waters of baptism. We all know that there will be a day that we are joined in heaven, and it is through those waters and the promise that we are being drawn home to be with God because of what Jesus has done through his teaching, his life, his death, his resurrection. There is a heavenly home for us, and so there may be a bit of a homesickness that we have. Homesick is a word that came around in the 1700s, around 1765. It's a German compound word, heim, heimweh, and it means to be homesick or to have home pain or to even have woe in one's life. There is a desire, there is a pain for us to be connected with this one God with, through Jesus to be home with him, but not yet. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. We are there, but not yet there in God's kingdom. We are the kingdom, but we know that there is the one to come on God's promised day. So how do we live our lives in the midst of the homesickness that we understand? 
that we are close, but not quite. Not quite yet. We live in that homesickness, in that home pain. Also, in our confession today, we talked about what it is to have a homesickness desiring for this world to be as God intended it to be. But we know it falls just a bit short, sometimes miserably short, because of the way we act, because of the way we treat one another, because of the judgments we lay on one another, because of the ways that we treat others, not the way that God intended, but the way that maybe we want to do that. How is it that we can love one another today? How is it that we can bring God's kingdom close and be here on earth so that people long and desire for the kingdom that is to come? For those who haven't been in church for a while or been in worship, whether it be online or in person, for those where maybe coming to church and something of that nature is just a little less than meaningful for you, I pray that you will be able to Dig deeper and understand this gospel message as we go through the gospel of Luke this year that you can be drawn closer and you can share what it means to be a disciple of Christ. So maybe the question today is, what is it that you long for today in this world? What is it you dream of, much like this image that's on your screen right now? Jesus shares a parable of the fig tree. Jesus shares that there will be signs in heaven and on earth, in the moon and the stars. The seasons will be changing, and the fig tree, you know that when it sprouts leaves, it's spring and summertime coming. You all know and can read the seasons and the weather. You know when it's about to rain. Rain clouds come in, maybe there's a little bit of a breeze, it begins to darken, we can see that it's going to rain. As disciples of Christ, as Christians, as baptized children of God, I hope that your relationship with Christ is one in which you can stand up and say, much like it says in our scriptures, to hold our heads up. And to be ready for that time when it comes, for you will know and you can see it just as you see the clouds, the sun, the stars, the moon, and a fig tree. Are we walking that closely with Christ today? That even in the midst of terror and anxiety and the difficulties of this world, that we can have hope, that we can know that promise that God's kingdom is near and close to us. I'm homesick. I'm homesick because I wish this world could be as God intended it to be. I'm homesick in such a way that I wish I wouldn't mess up in my day and that I could live that way. I'm homesick for that time when Jesus will come once again and bring us to himself. So if your home is like our home, we have our Christmas tree up already. No, we have 10 trees up already and still a few more to put up in our home. And we are already getting ready for that time of Christmas. We're preparing. Some of you will make cookies, and some of you will send out cakes and and do other things in which we prepare. And I know some of you will probably write that Christmas letter and send pictures off. We prepare for the coming of Christ. Let's not forget the message that he is coming. That he is coming to dwell here with us, to come into our homes and to share with this world that is in terror and in need and in brokenness and in trauma so that we can give thanks for the gift that Jesus gives us. So where is it that you see God coming into this world? Where is it that you see God being present here and now? I see it with people gathering at the bedside of those who are hurting, with those who are dying, by sharing prayers with them and by just being present. 
I see it in people sharing meals at pillars for the homeless. I see it as we begin getting ready to welcome and resettle a family, or an Afghani family who does not have a home to be at. They long for a place to call home. They long for a place where they can be free. They long for a place where they can call home. You all are going to provide that for one Afghan family who does not have a home, who has had to leave what they know. They are probably homesick for the life that they once knew. But there is also something to look forward to. We all have something to look forward to in the midst of the difficulty of life. Advent 1. It's the beginning of the promise, and we still have three more Sundays to get through before we get to that Christmas time. But we begin slowly to prepare ourselves, homesick for a world to reflect what God intended this world to be. We reflect on how we can take that sickness away and help others to be drawn closer to this home with Christ and to make that home in their heart and in their mind and in what they say and do. Jesus is that word that has come. The word spoken by prophets and the word who comes to dwell amongst us and the word who goes ahead to prepare a place. God is entering this homesick world all the time. We sometimes just need to open our eyes and open our minds to how God is present and Christ is with us no matter what it is we face. Amen. We sing the Church of Christ in every age and I think that is a great message for us to think about, whether it's the first century Christians or it's us today and everything in between and what is to come. We are the Church of Christ in every age. continue by confessing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite the congregation to please rise as we share in the sharing of these words of affirmation. Together let us share. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue by singing our prayer song, the first verse. We will then offer our prayers and then conclude by singing the fourth verse. In this season of watching and waiting for the coming of the Christ child, let us pray for all people and places homesick for God's presence. God of presence and peace, strengthen your church around the globe in every season. Proclaim the message of your love coming to the world. Open our hearts to recognize your face in all people and in all of creation. God of the mighty redwoods and the microscopic organisms, fields and city parks, the wind and the waves, be a healing balm to our wounded earthly home. May we nurture what you have lovingly created and shared with us to share with one another. God of equity and compassion, bring righteousness and goodness to all peoples of the earth. Give a heart of discernment and integrity to leaders in our communities. And in those communities, we pray for many, many who are seeking justice, many who are seeking to be recognized, many who are looking for a home Help us to work together to provide such a home for each and every person. God of comfort and care, be present with those who watch and who wait. Come to all who await births or deaths, divorces or new unions, new jobs, retirements, healing and life transitions of every kind. Especially we pray for the resettling of an Afghan family as they seek refuge here in this country and a place to call home, a place to claim freedom, a place to live in your joy. Take a few moments now to offer those prayers that are heavy on our hearts or that we might only know of that we wish to share with you either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of companionship and community, we give you thanks for the saints who have journeyed with us and who now abide in you. Even in distress and uncertainty, make us confident that your promises endure forever. Receive now these prayers spoken aloud and those in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, may we say amen. Amen.
The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace with one another, whatever those signs are. And those of you at home, go ahead and give big hugs and uh, high fives as we share that peace with one another today. This is also our opportunity to remember to give our offering to God and to support the ministry of Christ the King. Many of you do that uh, through ACH or online or by mailing it in. There are many ways to do so, as you see on the screen. Uh, There are also the offering baskets in the back. So thank you for your continued support as we uh, close, come close to the end of this year. We continue now with the great Thanksgiving and the words of welcome. I am reminded (laughs) that when we get into pandemic, sometimes we forget some of those words, but we do share in an open table here at Christ the King. And that means that this table is a table for everyone. We welcome you to receive that body and blood of Jesus Christ today as we share that. And I know many of you have it in your seats today. We welcome you. If this is the first time and it's been a long time, we welcome you. If it's a time that is challenging for you, we welcome you to take communion today so that maybe it will help you to be drawn closer to home with Christ. And so today, as we share this reconciling body and blood of Christ we remember. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, so you may take the wafer out of your bag, the body of Christ given for you, and you may now eat of that body. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So we take the cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. As long as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray and continues to teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will uh, sing, O Christ the Same, and then we'll have our benediction and sending.
Those are some long verses, and it's hard to keep straight what it all is. So sorry about that if the words didn't match what we were singing. We're human, and God forgives, right? We continue with our benediction. I had to run and get that because it's such a beautiful benediction for today as we share in this theme of close to home. And uh, it is uh, a place where we can now join hands of those in our family and those that we reach across the aisle. Uh, Not yet grabbing, but... uh, but feel connected as we reach our arms out and as we share that in our homes as well. Receive now the benediction. As you leave this service, your service begins. Comfort the homesick. Open the doors to others. Seek sanctuary. Be brave enough to go home another way. And remember that here in God's house, all are welcomed. So come back soon. In the name of our foundation, God the Spirit and Son, go in peace. Bring God's love to life. Thanks be to God. God bless. We'll see you next week. Happy Advent.